to say that we are joined by Senator uh, Mike uh, Crapo, Republican from the great state of Idaho, who is um, the um, also the uh, ranking member of uh, the um, of, uh, the Senate Banking Committee. I'm sorry, and uh, we welcome him in. Hello, Senator. How are you, sir? Hello. Good, Steve. Uh, I'm, I'm shifting here between uh, the, the, the Jody Arias verdict, which is due to break any second, and I apologize for that. All right, so let's, I, I, let me ask you a few questions, sir. Uh, first sure. of all, did you have uh, any chance to watch any of the uh, Benghazi proceedings at all today? Unfortunately, uh, those hearings were in the House, and I was all tied up in Senate business. So Fair I enough. Not get to. Fair enough. Um, do you think anything will... You know, basically, I could tell you that uh, what we expected to be said was said this time under oath. Um, do you think anybody will be held accountable? Do you think uh, uh, anybody's going to have to answer? Do you think this will adversely affect the president? Or, you know, John Bolton had predicted that this could bring down the Obama administration. He said that on our show a couple of days ago. Um, do, you, do you see anything uh, taking place in the aftermath of these hearings, you believe? Well, I'd have to see, like you said, uh, if the things that were expected to be said were said, and, and it's established that uh, there was a cover-up by the administration and that there were, uh, at, at minimum, a, a series of misinformations, if not disinformation, put out, then I think that could have serious consequences. I don't know that I would say it would take down the administration, but I, I do believe that there will be accountability because I believe the American people will pay attention now that this information is out. Okay, fair enough. All right, let, let, let's talk about uh, immigration reform. I know there were some amendments, I believe, introduced today by Senator Leahy uh, regarding same-sex partners of illegal immigrants, et cetera. Uh, is this bill going to have the votes to pass the Senate as is, uh, are there going to be poison pill amendments from either side, and is there going to be enough debate and enough uh, opportunity to offer enough amendments? Well, at this point, the bill is being uh, debated and uh, amendments are being proposed in committee, so we don't yet know what the final structure of the bill will be. Uh, I understand there are hundreds of amendments being proposed, and there are, I'm sure, in, in that set of amendments, uh, poison pill amendments and issues that will... Uh, be deal killers for people from all sides of the political perspective. All right, cause, cause Senator, I have to interrupt you. I hope oh, you'll sure. be able to stay with us for a couple of minutes. Let's go to the courtroom in the Jody Arias trial. All right. We're awaiting uh, the voice of the judge. Please be seated. The record will show the presence of the jury, the defendant, and all counsel. Ladies and gentlemen, I understand you have reached a verdict. The verdict form has been handed to the bailiff. Please come forward. We're waiting for the judge. I'm watching this along with you the if you're listening. Will read and record Here we the go. Verdict. The state of Arizona versus Jody Ann Arias, verdict count one. We, the jury, duly impaneled and sworn, and the above entitled action upon our oaths do find the defendant as to count one first degree murder guilty. Five jurors find premeditated. Zero fine felony murder, seven fine both premeditated and felony. Signed four person. Is this your true verdict? So say you want it all. Ladies and gentlemen, the clerk is now going to ask each of you a question. Please answer. Okay, yes uh, I want to get back now. to the senator. You've heard the verdict. Uh, uh, Jody Arias has been found guilty of murder in the first degree. Uh, five jurors found premeditation. Uh, seven found premeditation and uh, felony uh, murder. I don't. Uh, we'll get legal clarification on that as we go along. But she is guilty of first degree murder in the murder of uh, her boyfriend Travis Alexander. I'm so sorry, Senator. I thank you for bearing with us. I really do appreciate it. Oh, certainly. I understand. 
understand. Okay, uh, let, let's let's get back to immigration. So, so yes, um, uh, do you think there there are possibly uh, I think you said a, a great number of amendments that could be added. But uh, you know, do you think that uh, that this is going to get out of the Senate when all is said and done? And what kind of timetable are we looking at? Well, it's very hard to predict, and I don't mean to try to dodge the question, but right now it's hard to predict whether this bill will get the necessary votes. I believe that it does go a long way if the bill comes out as we expect it to, to look much like we expect it to. It goes a long way to address a lot of the concerns uh, about not uh, giving uh, a, a pathway to citizenship that uh, is different from what existing law would be would allow and to provide the kind of border protections as a prior requirement if uh, if a guest worker program is established i think that it's going to be a very hotly contested bill in the senate and frankly um, it's going to be close. That's why I don't know that I could predict whether it would have the necessary votes in the end to get out. Do you think, Senator, that, and I want to move on to economic issues with you, but do you, do you think that there are uh, pressures here um, where Republicans feel that they have to reach out to the Hispanic community? And I've, I, I, I'm like a broken record to my listeners, but you know, when the Hispanic community was polled coming out of the voting booth in 2012, Pew Research did a poll, and, and, and immigration reform was number four or five on the list of concerns. And I'm, I'm afraid of that. I'm also afraid of the fact that no matter how far Republicans are willing to go, once the bill is done and if it fa ever passes and becomes law, the Democrats will run right back and the media will run r right back and say, well, uh, it's something, but the Republicans wouldn't let this go in and that go in. And so, so the evil Republicans will be evil again and really accomplish nothing with even those Hispanics that that, that immigration does matter to. So I, I just don't see it as a, as, a, as a big chance for some kind of a victory with the Hispanic community. I tend to agree with your point of view. I, I do believe that there are a lot of Republicans who feel some pressure there from that perspective, but I think that you make a good point. Uh, I, I believe that ultimately Republicans need to make headway in getting support from the Hispanic community by focusing on the similarity of values that there are between the uh, vast numbers of the Hispanic community and uh, the Republican Party, and uh, that will be the area where they make much better progress. Yeah, and of course the, the, the tens of millions, uh, as predicted, that will enter the country and become citizens eventually and be able to vote, uh, what, 85, 90 percent or 100 percent of them, not 100, but w will be Democratic voters anyway, so there's no upside there either. Yeah, I, I think that if you try to predict the outcome of uh, future voting patterns from uh, these kinds of issues, it, it's very, very difficult. And, and probably both parties would make mistakes if that's the way they base their approach to the issue. Okay, let's, if we can, uh, and we're talking uh, right now to uh, uh, Senator Mike Crapo, Republican from Idaho, uh, who happens to be the ranking member of the Senate Banking, uh, Housing, and Urban Affairs Committee. And um, I know there, there was just a new uh, nomination of Representative of Mel Watt to be the director of the uh, of uh, FHFA. Uh, let's let's talk about um, you know the economy. And when you talk about the economy, you, you point to housing and and uh, and banking and um, mortgage rates at an all time low. The Fed, uh, some people feel, artificially inflating the stock market. Uh, unemployment number coming down. Artificially, many feel that too because more people are leaving the workplace. Um, you know, where are we? Are we still being propped up? Is this economy? Uh, getting better and and is the housing market getting stronger will it stay stronger or are, now that regulations are once again being loosened uh which i really can't believe after after what you know <laughs> to the progression right. of what got us here regulations on on mortgages and loans are being loosened again seems like we're just looking for more trouble well our economy is being propped up frankly the fed is printing money They've got a multi-trillion dollar book now because uh, the primary purchaser of our debt is our own Federal Reserve. And uh, the bottom line is that you're right. I think the stock market is artificially pumped up by the Fed's actions. And as long as the Fed continues to do that, it will make the aftermath much worse. And the, the basic problems in our economy still remain. That is, our national debt is now well over 100 percent of our gross domestic product. We have a system of spending in Washington, D.C. that is out of control. We uh, saw a huge tax increase in January with no reform of the tax code. And our, our national energy policy is making us even more and more uh, dependent on 
foreign countries. And, and let's not forget Obamacare kicking in next year. <laughs> Obamacare is kicking in, and not just the aspects of the health law that I think most people are now starting to understand are so damaging, but the taxes of right. Obamacare. The, the biggest tax increase in American history. Exactly. And so you have all of these things starting to happen, and, and we do face very difficult times in our economy. Uh, and the Fed's actions to help keep propping it up are putting it off for a while. If you put trillions of dollars into the system to keep it propped up, you can hold off some of the problems for a while, but it just makes the ultimate problems worse and digs the hole deeper. So would you describe our outlook as healthy or unhealthy <laughs> in well, honor of Obamacare? Give it, give it one of those descriptions. <laughs> I, I would say long-term very unhealthy, but I, I would also say that we have an opportunity here because if we can get it right and do the kind of tax reform and entitlement reform that uh, many of us are pushing back here, we actually could put ourselves in a position to take advantage of some of the most significant economic opportunities our nation has ever faced. So yeah. although that's a tall order, and I understand that the polit politics make it hard to get that done, we do have an opportunity. Senator Crapo, I appreciate your patience, and thank you, and I hope you'll come back, sir. I look forward to thank it. You thank you very you. much. Appreciate it. That's Senator Mike Crapo, uh, Republican from Idaho.